I got gluten, but I ate in my own home. <laughs> How did it happen? And I, you know, I used to call it hallucinating gluten, you know, but they really felt what they felt and they knew that reaction was their gluten reaction and they hadn't eaten any gluten. And so the cross reactor was like, ah, now we understand where this is coming from. Q music. Places, everybody places. We're starting in three, two. It's time for Life Interrupted Radio, a show dedicated to practical skills for your mind, body, and soul. We're hoping we'll go in one ear and stay there. Here's the host of the show, Sharon Saylor. Welcome to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio, where we look at the rise of autoimmune disorders. The NIH estimates nearly 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder. To put that in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. You'll be as surprised as I was to find out what autoimmune entails. I brought together top experts that range from doctors, specialists, nutritionists, researchers, and even those recovering from autoimmune to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information about autoimmunity and how to live your life uninterrupted. So let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And as always, it's my pleasure to be with you here. I'm so excited. I have Dr. Vicki Peterson on. She's a doctor of chiropractic, a certified clinical nutritionist, and a certified functional medicine practitioner. And she's the founder of the renowned Root Cause Medical Clinic in Sunnyvale, California. And she's also the co-author of The Gluten Effect, a best-selling book that's been celebrated by leading experts around the world on gluten sensitivity and diagnosis and treatment. And we all know how that plays into our autoimmune conditions. So we've just got tons of things to talk to her about. I recently saw a video that she did that was on the root causes and understanding the early signs and symptoms of autoimmunity. And I thought back to my own diagnosis where now looking in retrospect, I can see that there were a lot of warning flags that nobody put into any order. So I thought she'd be great to have her on. And perhaps if you haven't had that, maybe you're just thinking of that, hmm, is this an autoimmune or something? Or maybe for a family member or something. A lot of you I know out there currently have a diagnosis, but it's still good to know, right? So thank you, Dr. Vicki, for being on the show tonight. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. I love the video you did about early warning signs of autoimmunity. I know there's a lot of autoimmunity out there. I know, but when you shared with me that it was the third leading cause of death, uh, I I mean, that was just like sort of, (laughs) woo. That was a little scary. So if we can talk about these early signs and get it before people come down with full-blown autoimmunity, I thought that's a great show. Share with us a little bit about why you got interested in it, and then we'll jump into some of these early signs. I think it all started with our journey into celiac disease and gluten sensitivity, because we wrote the book back in 2009, and and that kind of began it. And our clinic has always seen a wide variety of, of health problems. And, you know, as being trained as a doctor, you sort of get certain viewpoints about things and autoimmunity seemed pretty scary. You know, it was your immune system is out of control. It's gone rogue. (laughs) We don't know what to do about it. And we just, we're going to suppress it. And so, you know, that was there. But then as we studied the immune system more, you know, it's a brilliant system. It's beyond brilliant. It's very complex. It's a little mind bogglingly complex but it's so smart. And when we were writing the book, The Gluten Effect, we were really starting to see success with the association with gluten and other autoimmune diseases beyond celiac. And this was back then, you know, we're talking almost a decade ago. Yeah, easily a decade ago. We didn't quite have it all figured out, but It was clear that we were getting people off medication and reversing their autoimmune disease or improving it so much they needed less meds and their life was so improved based on how they felt and all of these positives. And so we started putting together the fact that certain key pieces of knowledge we knew. So we knew that 70 to 80 percent of the human immune system, recently I heard up to 85 percent, so might need to shift that percentage a little bit of our immune system is housed in our gut. So you go, okay, good. So mother nature 
put it mostly <laughs> in the gut, which makes sense as to why, because of all the various organisms and toxins that can come our way from ingestion of things. So that was very protective. And, and then the next kind of evolution was understanding that the gut is called the second brain because it has this intelligence to it. So not only is the immune system brilliant, but the gut is called the second brain because it's the gatekeeper system that it has. So your small intestine has the square footage or surface area of a tennis court. So I always say to patients, <laughs> that's you know, amazing to think it. about. Oh, that's a lot of square yeah, footage. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I say we've all been on a tennis court, most of us anyway. So I say, just imagine standing at the net and doing a slow 360 and just taking in the grandeur of your small intestine <laughs> surface area. <laughs> but when you think about the fact that that surface area turns food into fuel for 10 trillion cells, you go, oh, okay, I guess we need a lot of surface area, right? <laughs> so it, it all makes sense. And then when food is being broken down, it has to get to a certain particle size, you know, so that it can. Um, leave that small intestine and fuel those cells, right? And so with when the immune system gets suppressed from whatever reason, the gatekeeper system of saying, oh, you want to get through the gate? Well, you're not fully digested. So you go on your way. <laughs> we'll try it again <laughs> later down. <laughs> we'll revisit it then, right? Or it's a bad guy, you know, a parasite or a toxin or bacteria, something that shouldn't be let in, if you will, then what happens again is that gates should close and say, no, no, we're going to, you know, we're going to poop you out, you know, the other end and you're not entering us. And, and so I kind of give patients that visual of this brilliance of this gatekeeper system. But when the immune system has weakened, what happens is the guards leave the gate and because there's just not enough guards anymore, you know, the immune system has gotten suppressed. And oh, so the gates I are see left. what you mean. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. That the yeah. guards are yeah. all, all passing away, so <laughs> yeah. disappearing. Exactly. A wall. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's just not enough to guard that square footage of that whole tennis court, and so um, they leave the gate and they leave the gates open, and that's where leaky gut. The concept of leaky gut came from is now you have this passage of things that shouldn't be passing through, and so. Even in innocent food, I usually use organic kale as sort of the most super, uh, innocent food on the planet, right? That's so great for you. Even if it was partially digested and then fell through that open gate, the bloodstream would still attack it because it's only partially digested. So it, it, it just begins to give that understanding of that poor little immune system. A, it got, got beaten down by something legitimate, whether it was an infection or a toxin or a food, Right. But then secondarily to that, the rest of the immune system housed in the bloodstream because of the leaky gut is just being assaulted all day long due to the leaky gut. So due to that chronic assault, it gets exhausted, but it also gets hypervigilant. And I tend to use the example of if you were a soldier in a, at war and you got away from your guys and you were are surrounded by bad guys you know, you would just get into this frenzied state of shoot everything, you know, and <laughs> that's what the immune system does, basically, because it's like everything's bad, you know, and in that hypervigilant state that it's called, uh, it makes a mistake. And so now that the legitimate bad guy is mistaken for a part of your body, and that is the evolution of autoimmune. And this concept was something we placed in our book back in 2009. I mean, wrote the book 2007-8, but the research didn't really come out till about 2012 through 14, that the leaky gut and it beginning in the gut was, was really exactly what was happening in most cases. And it just made so much sense about why the escalation of autoimmune in our country. It makes sense to me, although... We've been eating gluten for years. When I think about it, my great-grandmother, my grandmother, and one of my family members in the early 50s was actually diagnosed celiac. Celiac sprue is what they called it back then. Yes, so yes. grew up being very, very familiar with this idea of staying away from gluten. But I'm curious about, uh, back then, the family member was, I'll just say, somewhat of an anomaly. It was quite rare. Yeah. 
what what changed? What happened that all of a sudden now it seems like I know there's this quote, 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 fad of going gluten-free, all of the plethora of gluten-free products, but there are a lot of us that do stay away from it because we actually feel physical changes eating it. So did yeah. something happen no, in, in the pursuing yeah, decades that changed? <laughs> something did happen, actually. It's a great question. First of all, it's good to know that while celiac manifests anywhere from 1% to 5% of the population, making it a very common disorder, actually, at that percentage, that the people carrying the gene for celiac is up around 30 to 40%. Oh, wow. So that's interesting. Yeah, so it's not really that rare. And then if you throw gluten sensitivity in the mix, that could be upwards of 15, 20%. So on the very high end, you could look at 80% of us actually have an inclination. But you're absolutely right. Why this escalation it really goes back to our friend, the gut, and the fact that in our mostly large intestine is where the microbiome lives, which is all the probiotics, all the good guys, right? And what we've learned in the last five, seven years is that you can have a gene. We used to think genetics was genetics. It's like the shape of your face, the color of your eyes, yeah. there's nothing you can do about it, right? But now we've learned there's a plasticity to genes meaning they actually have an on switch and an off switch. So if someone had the genes for celiac disease or any autoimmune disease that you want to mention, as long as that, that gene stayed in the off position, you would not be manifesting the disease. So what has occurred is that due to the ill health, the growing and increasing ill health of our microbiome or the good guys in the gut, they're not able to keep those bad genes in the off position anymore, and they're flipping on more and more than we've ever seen. So the genes have been there, but the healthy body has kept them in the off position, and we're just less healthy gut-wise. Oh, so if we want to go back to the metaphor of the soldiers, that <laughs> I'm just saying that the, yes. the warring factions have uh, everything. You would mention toxic, virus, environmental uh, foods, all sorts of things. Maybe there's like too many enemy soldiers right now. <laughs> but no, it's true. It's true. I mean, anything from the drugs, the chemicals, the GMO, all of these things coming our way uh, weren't there 75 years ago. You know, just we're not even we don't even have to go back that far. And the bioaccumulation of those things or, you know, they call when you talk about toxicity POPs which stands for persistent organic pollutants, a baby being born right this second. If you and I went down to our local hospital and we said, uh, everybody's happy, all good. I, we just want a drop or two of blood. <laughs> then that cord blood, we could find pesticides and, and chemicals that haven't been produced in two decades in that child's blood today. That's shocking. I know it blows your mind. It, well, it does because I'm having a new I'm having a new family yeah. member in a couple of weeks. So yeah, it's absolutely oh, I'm sorry. shocking. <laughs> <a> terrible image. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, your ability, and that's why it's so important to nurse and keep that body as as healthy as you can, because your ability to detoxify is there as well. But the problem is with with our environment being the way it is, and our food being the way it is, and the standard American diet being the way it is as we roll our eyes in our head, these things are doing nothing to to strengthen. They just continue to wear it down and, and beat it down. So one of the things I love about my job is seeing how strong the human body is and its ability to repair is miraculous. And I so love seeing that in babies and in 70-year-olds. You know, it's like that human body's resiliency is, is beyond phenomenal. But we are seeing this beat, beating down of our poor immune system and gut and genes turning on, as I said, because of that lack of health of the gut more and more and more and more. And spoke to a woman this morning because we're a destination clinic. So we see patients from across the country. She's from Michigan. And she said, she said, gosh, I love my kids, but that second kid did, did me <laughs> in. And as far as her, she had celiac and then subsequent another autoimmune disease, the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And I said, that's not unusual. You know, it's like you were holding it together. You had the gene, you were, you know, it was holding pretty well. And then she had, she was sort of in bed for 10 weeks and just a difficult pregnancy. 
and it was too much. And the jeans slipped on and she said, yeah, I could almost feel when it happened, <laughs> you know. Oh, my goodness. Well, and we need to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. When we come back, we're going to talk to Dr. Peterson about this idea of that flipping the switch. We're going to get into that. And also in the video that she did, uh, this idea of once you have an autoimmune, you're more likely to get more. And she's alluded to that here, I can tell. So I want to get more into depth about that because a lot of us here that listen to the autoimmune hour have to raise our hands and say, yeah, at least one. So uh, we'll want to know more about that. What can we do about that so we don't continue down that runway of getting more and more and more. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com to learn more. This episode is brought to you by mindfulnessinactionbook.com. To get your free four-minute guided meditation to relax, refresh, and renew in just four minutes. And who doesn't have four minutes? Stop by mindfulnessinactionbook.com now. This guided meditation is in handy MP3 format, so you can use it anywhere, anytime. Download it now at mindfulnessinactionbook.com. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And we're here today with Dr. Vicki Peterson. And she is the head of Root Cause Medical Clinic. And she's a doctor of chiropractic, certified clinical nutritionist, and certified functional medicine practitioner. And the clinic is... Uh, based in Sunnyvale, California. And Dr. Vicki's been sharing with us a history of the leaky gut and gluten and things, which I've just found fascinating. And I, you know, it's one of those things I know that as more and more people get autoimmune, there's more and more research. But every time I hear about the new research, it just all starts to make more and more sense. Because when I first got diagnosed, it was it wasn't even that long ago. I feel that there's just been this huge leap in information in just the last couple of years. Maybe it's just my interest in it, but (laughs) (laughs) let's talk a little bit more about this idea of the immune system. And once it gets beaten down, um, well, first off, let's talk about once the gene gets on, can we turn it off? That's a good question. I spoke with Dr. Alessio Sassano about that. He's a world-renowned researcher along with his team. He always says, don't forget my team, so we're not going to. But he's uh, out of Harvard now, and uh, he does celiac research. He actually found the chemical, the protein zonulin, which is responsible for the leaky gut. So uh, he's a brilliant, brilliant man. And, And I asked him that. I said, Okay, if we have this sort of trilogy that we talk about where you have to have the gene, in the case of celiac, you have to be eating gluten and you have to have an unhealthy gut in order to have this all manifest. What if we got a healthy gut? 
could we turn that gene back off? And he said, theoretically, yes. So he agreed with me that theoretically it was possible. I haven't seen it yet. I I don't know exactly what it would take to get that perfect gut back. I'm certainly striving for it myself, goodness knows. He said theoretically, yes. So I just, I can't say I've seen it yet, but that doesn't mean we can't reverse autoimmune, but that's just the gene turning on and, and expressing itself. Right. Well, that's the next obvious question then. Well, if we can't, let's say theoretically we can, but right now we're not sure. So I'll go to my next question, which is the next plan B. (laughs) So what yeah. what do we do to minimize, reverse, or maybe even optimize <laughs> if we can't quite undo? What are some plans that we can put into practice? Obviously not eating gluten. What are some plans to at least maybe stop it from moving forward and then ideally reverse? Yes, that's a great question. It is something that I re- review with patients, that spectrum that you just laid out, because as we well know, When you have one autoimmune disease, you're at a much higher incidence. And I've heard 3X, I've heard 5X, I've heard, you know, all different numbers, um, but we know it's a higher incidence to get another. And how would that not be the case if you think about it? You know, if you think about the fact that the immune system has gotten overwhelmed, all of these bad guys are coming its way in that confusion and in that stress and, and overwhelm. It is confusing one protein, which is the protein of the bad guy that it originally started attacking, whether it's gluten or, or a bacteria or what have you, it now confuses that for something that looks similar. And of course, our, our body is loaded with protein. So it could be going from the thyroid today with Hashimoto's to the joints tomorrow and it's rheumatoid or MS or lupus, what have you, right? And so the question is, how do you stop that it really is getting back to taking that stress load off the immune system because the immune system, and that's where we started with our appreciation and how we came up with the idea of, of how to treat autoimmune disease was that appreciation of this is too brilliant a system. And I just really got bothered by the concept that it would suddenly get stupid and the only oh, way to too. treat it, right? <laughs> it's just it's, it's so disrespectful, I think, <laughs> of a part of the body that's that brilliant. And so like, how dare you just say, oh, you know, you're, you're being a renegade and bam, we're just going to suppress you with, with a drug. Right? Emotionally, mentally, all of that. I think so many times, you know, I've tripped up numerous times and able to been come, come back. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure my immune system exactly. can do. <laughs> Yeah. So I always tell patients, like, instead of suppressing your immune system, like it's some bad guy, we more give it a foot massage. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> it's been tough. I get it. You know, <laughs> we're going to be super nice to you. Right. And the way I see it is that as what we are looking for is two key things. One is what was that original stressor? Was it gluten or an infection or some combination, you know, but what was that original thing that sort of took it down? So that's number one. We have to find that and we have to get it off the table. And you can have these chronic infections for decades and nobody ever knows you have them because they're silent from the viewpoint of you don't have a fever, you're not sick in bed with something that feels like an acute infection. These are deep chronic infections in the crypts and crevices of the small intestine or large intestine. And so they don't give those typical symptoms of an infection. So we have to find those and we have to eradicate them or in the case of something like a food, stop eating it, right? So you're getting it off the table. So that will give the immune system a little bit of a, oh, good, the bad guy has stopped. (laughs) Then we have to heal. And that healing can involve a number of different things. You know, the primary getting the leaky gut healed. But a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, I'll take L-glutamine because I heard, you know, and probiotics because I hear it's good for the leaky gut. And it's true. It is good. But if you still have the infection or you're still eating a food, you know, you're sort of putting the water in and it's falling out the hole on the other side and and you're never getting it. (laughs) We have to do it in the proper order. That's the key that we address is removing the bad and then that re-strengthening. And that can take 
it can, it can take what it takes. You know, we have to find the adventure is how did you get there versus, you know, the person next to you. But the beauty of that is that once that immune system has been given a break, then it, go, it you know, sort of like wakes up from this nightmare going, oh, that's the thyroid. What was I thinking? You know, like, what was I thinking <laughs> And it stops. So then the question is, when it stops doing that, now you've buffered yourself, Teflon coated a bit, a bit yourself from the future development of autoimmune, which you've got to do. You know, that's what we've got to do. At the, at the very minimum, we're preventing more autoimmune from developing. And of course, at, at the maximum is if depending on the body's recuperative abilities and how much damage has been done to that organ or body part, the ability to heal, I never underestimate the body's ability to heal itself because I've seen some amazing, amazing things in my almost 30 years of practice. I have a quick question when you said about finding the, well, the root cause, like the name of your, yeah. your, your <laughs> clinic. I'm curious, though, I'm thinking there could be more than one root cause. Couldn't there be a, a hidden virus? I've heard that the Epstein-Barr sometimes has yeah. been implicated, mm -hmm. so, you know, sort of put the wanted poster out on Epstein-Barr. Yeah. And you could have maybe not gluten, but I've been told to stay away from dairy as well, that yeah. some of the dairy proteins aren't good for my gut. I'm off gluten, too. So it sounds like there could be more than one offender we're looking for. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's why we definitely do a, a broad and deep look for a number of different organisms, whether they're viral, bacterial, protozoa, amoeba, parasite. <laughs> you know, like we're, we're looking for the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. You know, we find that a lot. And that's a very missed area. And I think functional medicine really respects and understands that very well done stool tests by these labs that look for the DNA of the organisms. And, you know, they take some three weeks to culture it because they're looking for all of these different organisms. But that's such a valid test because we've seen the response for addressing those infections versus uh, the traditional medical viewpoint is, oh, a stool test only if you have diarrhea, <laughs> which is not right. the case. And they look for basically two major parasites. And if those aren't there, they say you're fine. And so very often patients come in and say, oh, I've done a stool test. And I'm like, yeah, where and for what? <laughs> you know? So it's like, I'm glad <laughs> you don't have Giardia and Cryptosporidium, but <laughs> there's a whole lot of other bad guys that could be present. And so we never miss that. As you mentioned, the gluten and dairy are, are definitely the two worst. And then there's a great lab test for what's called cross-reactive foods. And these are foods much akin to that whole story we just went through about how the immune system gets overwhelmed and kind of mistakes your body part for the bad guy. The cross-reactive foods are foods that are non-gluten in nature, but they have little similar proteins to gluten. And once again, because of this overwhelmed immune system, your body is attacking a certain food like it was gluten because of that same confusion. And so this test was so great when it came on the market because it answered the question of patients saying, I got gluten, but I ate in my own home. <laughs> How did it <laughs> and I, you know, I used to call it hallucinating gluten, you know, but they really <laughs> felt what they felt and they knew that reaction was their gluten reaction and they hadn't eaten any gluten, you know, and so the cross react was like, ah, now we understand, you know, where this is coming from. We've been talking about the immune system being overwhelmed. I have to be honest, as an autoimmune patient myself, there are times that I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> of course. When I first got the list of what I could eat, because that was shorter than what I couldn't eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It was a little overwhelming, like, okay, how do I fit this into my life with, you know, and I've been able to and things like that. But how does things like that, not just our system being overwhelmed, but stress and uh, nervousness and worry. And I've yeah. often said too this idea of when you have an autoimmune condition and you're having, maybe you're going along pretty smoothly, you know, it's, you know, you're like, okay, I, I, I know I'm not cured, but it's, you know, it's pretty smooth. And then all of a sudden, you know, you feel like you've got an itch. It's so hard not to get overwhelmed. You're like, when is an itch just an itch? <laughs> or when, no, is, when is gas just gas? <laughs> yes, exactly. No, I, I really understand. Working with the stress gland, the adrenal gland is, is an integral part of our program. Absolutely. Because 
that adrenal gland has so much to do with hormonal balance and imbalance, mood and anxiety and depression and a lot of those things that you can go through, not only being diagnosed with a disease, but this is a gland that because food has not been turning into good fuel, that's what really hits the adrenal gland because they're only as good. They're like those little energy powerhouses and they're only as good as food is turning into stable fuel for them, which of course with a gut that's leaky, you know, that's not happening. Getting them back to batteries is, is a very key point. And then also the sex hormones themselves, you know, we're finding women, especially whether they've just had a baby and their hormones need to be reset, or even our young women, very young in their 20s, have a lot of hormonal imbalance due to the environment and the food. And then we're finding women entering perimenopause, menopause at younger ages, kind of thought, oh, 50 is, is kind of that time. But we find that women can be menstruating regularly. But if you look at their sex hormones, they've really fallen off a cliff already, even though that monthly reminder seems like, no, we're, we're still going, you know, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. But the hormones tell a different tale and mental clarity and loss of concentration and just and, and so you have an extra burden. And of course, because autoimmune diseases can take 20, 25 years to develop very often, and women are three times you know, more often getting them than men, then very often we are of that age uh, in the 40s when something finally gets diagnosed. And so then you get that double whammy with the, the sex hormones going off and it's it's not a pretty, not a pretty picture, um, but we work with that extensively. And it's something that we never, it's never not part of the program, at least as far as an assessment is concerned. Wow. Well, well, okay. We need to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to get a sip of water because as even with an autoimmune condition myself, and I feel like I know more about my condition than most of my medical staff, <laughs> the, the people that help me in the, my medical world. Oh my gosh. But we'll be back in just a quick minute because I want to get back with Dr. Vicki and talk about some of the early warning signs. We've been talking a little bit about actually the what's happening, but what are some of those red flags? I know most of us here listening have the disease now, but if we could help a family member or a friend saying, hmm, that might be a red flag. So we'll get into that right after this quick commercial break. And then I also, we got to talk more about the sex hormones because you had a great blog on that. Oh, well, got to go. Be back in a minute. Do you want to be a better leader? Have better relationships? become more self-aware, be a better communicator. Hi, I'm Sharon Saylor, best-selling author, professional speaker, and executive coach. And my life passion is empowering professionals to be the best that they can be. After years of working with professionals, I've discovered the seven things nobody is telling you that can cost you your clients, sales, and even your career. And I want to give it to you free. You've heard my show, you know my passion, and maybe we'll be working together sooner rather than later. So go grab this ebook now to find out the seven things that's costing you big time over at SharonSailor.com forward slash radio gift. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. What are all the things you witness online in a day? Cats playing piano, selfies on your feed, your friend's picture being turned into a nasty meme that's been shared 50 times, 51, 52. When someone's being bullied online, it's hard to know what to do. 
Now you can speak up with the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble, and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. You'll let the world know it isn't cool, and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to the Auto Immune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor, and we're here with Dr. Vicki Peterson today, and she is the head of the Root Cause Medical Clinic in Sunnyvale, California. She's a doctor of chiropractic, a certified clinical nutritionist, and a certified functional medicine practitioner. That's all on her bio. But I'm going to have to say also just an expert, a plethora of amazing information on autoimmune conditions. I'm a little bit overwhelmed, which I love because to me, it's just (laughs) Let it hit, because the more I can find out about this, the more I can put all my pieces together. Because I think one of the things I've been hearing, Dr. Vicki, is that everybody's puzzle is different. And so the pieces, like if my pieces don't quite, well, my, maybe not fix your pieces or whatever, you know. <laughs> that it's a, so let's talk about some of those early signs that I promised that we'd talk about that Maybe a few of us will be going, hmm, boy, I remember that one. Boy, I remember that one. Too bad it's I'm down the road. But what are some early signs? That's a really good question. And I think the problem is because we live in such a disease-oriented society that if you're tired, you know, or you have achiness. It could be my kids. It could be lack of sleep. It could be sitting too much. <laughs> Yeah. How how many things could we attribute fatigue to? You know, who's going to get excited about that? But, you know, your fatigue, your achy, often maybe gaining weight, digestive problems, just loaded, gassy, maybe it's irregular, maybe constipation. It's not quite right. You have some sleep issues, you know, really not getting that restorative sleep. Maybe you have skin changes, you know, you've got some dry skin or, or rashiness or, you know, these innocent little things that really nobody gets excited about. And and those are at the core, you know, those are really at the core of autoimmune, you know, heart racing, you know, palpitations, of course, with thyroid, that happens a lot, but, or just the lethargy. I mean, how many, how many people would you have to interview to say, wow, are you ever tired? And they're like, yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> nobody can get excited about these symptoms. But, you know, what we like to say at the clinic is, you know, we named ourselves root cause, because we're all about that, is that, course you can have temporary things happen oh you had a hard week and you're tired okay fine you know but then you bounce back but if you don't you're talking about things that okay I just can't can't get the better of it's just it's just it's sticking with me the body is trying to tell you something and it's the only way it can tell you is by giving you a symptom it can't send you a text or an email or have a conversation with you all it can do is bam you know hand you that symptom and they always mean something and that's And we always look for autoimmune when somebody has this sort of combination of things that nobody can put their finger on. And I think the other tragedy, honestly, in this country is is people will get like an ANA test positive or a C-reactive protein or one of the more general inflammatory, potentially autoimmune markers. And their doctor says, well, but it's, it's not exact because these are general. And so we'll watch it like, don't watch it, (laughs) do something about it, you know, like, let's fix it now, we're going to watch it for five years until it's like, oh, now we have a name, great, you know, thanks a lot, we could have gotten rid of it before it manifested into an actual box, you know, that we could put a label on, so sorry, I digress there. Uh, (laughs) Oh, no, that's my soapbox, Dr. Vicki, that is my soapbox, when I think back to my progression, I can think back 20, 30 years, where I was going to the doctor, and usually it was just the one complaint, chronic fatigue, not chronic fatigue, because I know that's a label, but constant fatigue, and there would always be some explanation, oh, well, your kids are young, or, you know, your kids are school age, and you're having to work and drive them everywhere, okay, but one thing that I'm I was told not too long ago that makes sense in retrospect, and I would love to have people who aren't in full-blown disease right now going, like you said, catch it early, is there was like this series of things, you know, a little fatigue, a little brain fog, lack of sleep, all these things, and I would be tested for various things, whether it was chronic fatigue or Sjogren's or tested for various things, and none of them would be quite, you know, I'd be okay. I might not be right in that middle of the optimal range. I'd be like, maybe it went to 50 and I'm 49, but you're still good. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. 
it it wasn't until I got a very obvious symptom that popped it out and they were able to put a label on my head and say, okay, that's what you've got. But looking back, what are some things as a patient I could have done uh, that would help other people to understand? I'm thinking one of the things I could have done is probably keep better track of my own medical records and, and say, or my own notes and say, well, look, I've had the, been fatigued now for five years and we've checked off the box, this and this and this. What's really going on? Two years before the full-blown autoimmune condition, I was going to a dermatologist and they were labeling me all sorts of other things. Yeah. And then it was that one day that I came in and you could just see the look on her face when she realized she'd been way off on her diagnosis. I'm just going all over the track here, but what are some things that you suggest for patients to do before they have the full-blown disease? So our medical care providers can have a better understanding of the whole thing. Yeah. Because I think if somebody had been able to see the whole thing or if I'd been able to see the whole thing, it might have had a different outcome. Right. I don't mean to be pessimistic because I'm not that kind of person. But in this regard, the thing I hear over and over and over from patients is that, I mean, patients these days have to so much be their own advocates. And I say, thank goodness for the internet, you know, because people are getting so smart about their issues. And I think there's some, there's so much amazing information, which I think is great. But the issue has been that when patients go to their doctor kind of repetitively, it's like, okay, this, and then coming back, still this, and then they go back again and say, uh, you know, <laughs> like that, then what happens either the doctor gets a little high handed with them and says, annoyed, I'm the doctor, you're not. And I've told you you're fine. And maybe it's psychological, which gets me irate. And I see this over and over and over again. And what patients say when I either talk to them, you know, long distance, or they're in the clinic is it's like being just being here and knowing that you don't think I'm nuts is such a, a major stress off my shoulders because then often the family thinks you're crazy too, you know, depending on how they think about medicine. It's like, well, you've been to five doctors and they all say you're fine. You know, maybe you should lighten up or maybe, and so invalidating of what you know about your machine. So, I mean, I do think it's really smart to keep track of your symptoms and, and certainly have a good documentation, but I think you have you have to find a clinician who thinks the way we're talking about because otherwise you will be batting your head against a wall and come out with some psychological diagnosis and some antidepressant that is so far afield from what you need because traditional medicine just doesn't think this way yet. They just don't. And so I, I wish I had a better answer for that, but that's what I see over and over again and it's, it's upsetting, but I mean, that's why I'm here today. You know, like you just, I love any <laughs> opportunity to share that the handling of this is not difficult. Now, granted, there are dietary changes. And I, it's always one of the first things I talk about with patients, like I'm not going to hand you a pill. Not that we never use meds, but I'm not handing you a pill. You are going to need to do dietary and lifestyle changes. We will absolutely hold your hand through the adventure and the change and don't be hard on yourself. And you know, it's, it's, it's a process, but it has to be. That's just the way these machines are. There is no quick fix. It's starting with the gut, starting with the immune system, taking away the bad guys, healing it up. You know what I mean? And it, that's, not, that's not complex. You go methodically through the steps. It's not difficult, but you have to know how to find these things, you know, and, and then what to do for each individual. Right. Well, so many things there that you said. I was just nodding my head the whole time because my experience – was that too? Fired numerous doctors who just, yes. oh, you're just having a panic attack? No, no, no. <laughs> the hives are not a panic attack. <laughs> you know? I know. It's That's, so frustrating. Ask any of my friends. I don't have panic yes. attacks you know, or whatever. Whatever it is. It's so frustrating. I know that you're a certified functional medicine practitioner. That's in my mind, maybe it's been there a long time, but in my mind, that's kind of a fairly new approach to medicine. Yeah. Where when I found my practitioner, gosh, we went back and talked to my mom about my birth. Yeah. That's how far back we went. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, Which was great. Yeah. But it was amazing. No, it's true. I mean, um, 
usually when we do a history at the clinic, one of the first pe things people say is, wow, nobody's ever asked me these questions before. You know, it's like, what was your health like as a, as a kid? And how did you eat as a child? And were you on a lot of antibiotics? You know, we're looking for things that were stressing the system early. And unfortunately, today, there's a lot of people that like, yeah, you know, we just we got fast food and mom was working and we we're always in a rush. And, you know, when I think about it, we didn't eat very well. And, and maybe they did get a lot of antibiotics or they, they got a woman got on the birth control pill really young or some acne medication, like all these things that are hard on the gut. So that's what we want to look at. But we know them to be hard on the gut now. I don't want to be too hard on my family members that raised me because I'm thinking back to the times when I really think that they thought that <clears throat> these foods that were coming out, processed foods, you know, they were sold as healthy. I mean, for heaven's sakes, at one time, you know, years and years and years ago, they were telling you that smoking was healthy right, for heaven's right. sakes. Yeah, your doctor recommended so it. I, <laughs> for <way long. laughs> I guess in some respects, we're learning so much more about what is taxing on the body and what is healthy and not healthy that we can raise our children better. But I think that a lot of the things that may have got me here were just honest mistakes. I don't blame any of the things that happened from like maybe eating too much processed chips right. or something. No, it's true. And, <laughs> and I think the, the important thing is I ask those questions so I can put together this puzzle piece that is the patient and I can look for these areas of weakness. But then it's like, never regret yesterday. Life is in you tomorrow, you know, and here we go. And now we're just going to do everything we can to heal this body up because it has that capability. It absolutely does. And that is the beauty of it. So, you know, you can, you can forget about it. I just need to learn about it a little bit so I can be a better diagnostician. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was it was surprising when I learned everything, and I'm looking back at it, going, oh, "Boy, there were a lot of stressors from childhood on." I could say, "Okay, everything from I traveled a great deal to foreign countries, so who knows what <laughs> you you were talking about parasites? I mean, yeah. all sorts of crazy things happen in our lives." Well, we need to take one more quick commercial break, and we'll we'll be back. We're going to talk to Vicki Peterson and some more about autoimmune and the early precursors to it. And I just love this. I know we've sort of gone all over the place, but I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. We'll be right back. <laughs> Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org, brought to you by the Ad Council. Research shows we apologize up to 10 times a day, and most of the time, we say sorry as a response to someone else's mistake. What if we thanked people instead of all that unnecessary apologizing? So instead of saying, sorry, I'm rambling, you say, thank you for listening. Join us at ProjectForgive.com, a free non-religious resource on global forgiveness.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com, and we're here today with Dr. Vicki Peterson. She's the Doctor of Chiropractic, Certified Clinical Nutritionist, Certified Functional Medical uh, medicine practitioner, and she's the head of the Root Cause Medicine Clinic in Sunnyvale, California, which is a destination clinic, which I just love that, being able to <laughs> have it all there and being able to figure it out. Because I'm thinking about my own journey, how many places I've been in the past three years. So we've got the diagnosis. Uh, I mean, I'd love to talk to you forever here, but <laughs> I want to be respectful of your time. We're running out of time. But We've got the diagnosis, or maybe not yet, and we come to your clinic. What happens? Yeah, that's a good question. We're multidisciplinary at the clinic, so we have internal medicine, medical doctors, and and the functional uh, medicine practitioners, as we've been talking about, and then we also have chiropractic and physical therapy from the structural aspect of things, so we have kind of all those bases covered. Once we do the history, we definitely want uh, some basic laboratory testing and even even a comprehensive panel that you say, oh, I might have had my annual physical three months ago. But I don't know if you've noticed, but comprehensive panels have gotten less comprehensive <laughs> as, as the years have gone yes. by. Um, and it's because they're trying to save money and they're looking for just sort of a token look at the thyroid and the liver and the heart. And they're thinking that if something's really out of control on those levels, that then the disease process will you know, be clear. And then they can do sort of more of a deep dive into that area of, of the body. But we want to see the, the look. We want to do the deep dive from the beginning and, and because otherwise you can miss things. So we're really looking at, at, at all the major bodily systems. Um, we look for food sensitivities, and there are some good tests for that, as well as elimination diets that eliminate some of the most common food reactions. We love that stool test. We want to know, you know, <laughs> who's home, who who shouldn't be, as I like to say. The adrenal test uh, is, is a very good one. To, you know, And of course, not everybody needs all of these things, but these are just some key things that we really like to do. Sex hormones, depending on the age of, of the man or woman, you know, we have a lot more men with low libido and erectile dysfunction and things like that, which is due to hormonal imbalance. Certainly women are more unfortunately represented in the autoimmune world. But so we look at kind of that cross the board uh, and then there can be toxins like heavy metal or lime or, as you mentioned, like viral load issues. So the history will, will help us with that. But we're looking to get data of parts of the body and asking it in different ways that maybe have never been asked before. And we have those specialty tests at our disposal that allow us to do that. And when I say specialty tests, I, you know, insurance still pays for them depending on the kind of plan you have. So they're not exotic. Uh, it's just that they're, <laughs> you know, there's just a handful of labs that offer them in the country. So they still have that sort of specialty label. Now, when it's a destination, though, that's very different than me just calling up appointment, driving across town. Yes. I might vary, but how long does a person come for? And do they have regular visits? Is it a, like a routine or what happens? Yeah, that's a great question. What we do is I do an initial phone consultation that's complimentary. And then as long as we feel it's a good fit, then we do the first official phone consultation. And it's at that consultation, we decide what labs we want that we don't yet have. So that when you arrive physically, we have a lot of data already. And um, it's a 48 hour mm -hmm. kind of thing. So if you flew in on Monday morning, you could fly out Wednesday night, but we see the three days. So it'd be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we see you, but about 48 hours turnaround time. So not very long. And then that having seen you and examined you allows us to then work with you long distance in on Zoom, which is what we're on today, because that's HIPAA compliant. It's got that privacy aspect to it. So we use that at the clinic. It works very, very well. It, it all started really at, at the behest of our patients. You know, it's like if your sister was my patient and she said, oh, my sister is, you know, up in Oregon and I want you to meet with her and she's coming for Christmas, you know, as an example, <laughs> we would examine you, but then we could continue to work with you once you went back home to Oregon. So yeah, so it works very, very well. Oh, that's fantastic. It's exciting sometimes when I've heard about destination resorts and actually researched them throughout this journey of mine. Some of them, you were gone for quite a while. Yeah. And it, to me, it was like, I really can't, yeah. as much as I would love to, I really can't give up <laughs> that much right. time. Right. <laughs> or I know that sounds silly to regain your health, but sometimes you got to keep on 
moving oh. forward in other areas of your life, even while you're working to optimize yeah, your health. Yeah, and we're very <laughs> sensitive to that. But then we try to keep those visits often enough. And we always, I always say to my destination patients on top of even my local, it's like, you can't be shy. Anything that comes up, pick up the phone. You know, it doesn't have to be an official time. Just let us know what's going on because we, we're there for you. And don't let that distance get in the way of your getting resolution. Oh, I just love how technology makes it so easy yeah. these days. Well, we're out of time, Dr. Vicki Peterson. Tell us your website and how people can get a hold okay. of you. And thank you so much. This has just been, oh my goodness, I've got a million more questions, but this has been great. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, the website is rootcausemedicalclinic.com. And then our telephone number is 408-733-0400. And if you go to the website at rootcausemedicalclinic.com, there's a contact us page and just go on that and we get an email and we'll contact you. It's been such a pleasure. I enjoyed every moment. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And everyone, as always, visit us back here next Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great weekend, whatever your adventures and enjoy. The information provided on LifeInterruptedRadio.com is for educational purposes only. What you hear, read, and see on Life Interrupted Radio is based on experience only. The information presented here should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on Life Interrupted Radio. You've been listening to Life Interrupted Radio. To learn more, listen to other shows, and gain free resources that can help empower your life, be sure to stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com. This episode is brought to you by mindfulnessinactionbook.com. To get your free four-minute guided meditation to relax, refresh, and renew in just four minutes, and who doesn't have four minutes? Stop by mindfulnessinactionbook.com now. This guided meditation is in handy MP3 format so you can use it anywhere, anytime. Download it now at mindfulnessinactionbook.com.